What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Can You Game On It? Today, I'm really excited about this episode. I'm like pumped. I know we've reviewed keyboards before back in December last year. I believe it was part of like the Christmas edition. Now it's already September. It feels just like yesterday, right? Since the time's all gone and I just don't know. But anyways, in the span of the 9-10 months that I have talked to you about keyboards, back then it was Razer and I'm gonna be real. I knew nothing about keyboards. All I knew is I like the clack clacks. I like it the louder the better. I like the clicky feeling, you know? Cherry MX Browns was my favorite. Blue's a close second because of the clack clacks, you know? ESMR stuff. But uh, if you guys didn't know, I used to run the IGN Southeast Asia TikTok. And I fell into a rabbit hole. Custom keyboards. Yes, guys, custom keyboards is the rabbit hole I have discovered. And it's, it's, it's pretty bad. I have two unique first player keyboards. My own custom built over here. This one cost me a lot of money. We don't talk about that, okay? We don't we don't talk about that. All right, guys. Just now I mentioned that I have two first player keyboards that I wanted to show you guys, and these are both of them. These are actually the same keyboards but just different keycaps. And as you can see here, there's just so many types of designs. It doesn't only come in white. I just pick white because I'm basic like that. But you know, it also comes in black too. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the specs. Oh my god, I can do this. Action! Ah! So before we begin, I think you guys are wondering what the heck is a custom keyboard? So just like custom PCs that you have people building, you know, with certain parts picked out and then you build it into a fully built PC based on your design and specs, custom boards are the same. You can basically choose the body, you can choose the switches, you can choose how hollow it wants to sound, how mushy you want it to be, how clacky you want it to be, how talky you want it to sound, whatever you want. You can even get customizable cables. Exhibit A, I'm gonna show you. This is my custom coil. Yeah, you can pretty much get any of these customized every single part, every single switch, every single keycap down to how rattly and how quiet the stabilizers want you want it to be. Stabilizers are actually the metal rods or the parts that you use for the space bar, the shift button, the enter key, backspace, etc, etc, etc. So back then, pre-built keyboards were a thing. You go to a store, you see brands like Razer, Corsair, whatever. You just pick it up and you go home and then you just you know, have it as is. And back then, you know, I was a huge fan of Corsair and I was just like, oh, I'm gonna pick up this one. I'm like, I felt the, like the coolest kid in the block, you know, because I had some brown switches and a very prestigious brand that I have, you know. But then over the last few months that I have been into the world of a key but talk, which is keep goes for keyboard, people call it keeb and TikTok. I found that there are so many better sounding keyboards. I used to run a Corsair K strafe, RGB strafe, brown switches, and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. But then I built this baby, and I'm gonna just say that my world turned upside down. For the price you're gonna be paying for, you know, that, those expensive brands, like usually like what Logitech goes for like 900 to 1000 for their premium stuff, you know, Corsairs as well. Add a little bit more or less up to you, you can pretty much get a keyboard that you want. And the thing is, I noticed with pre-builds is that these stabilizers are absolutely rattling. I, I, I sound like an elitist, I hate this. Like people were like, Tish, people like loud keyboards because it's because it's, it's, it's how preferential. We won't have that argument here. Okay, we won't have that argument here. <laughs> okay, so for those of you guys who just want to begin, who are brand new, just like me, I'm absolutely really new in this hobby. I wouldn't say I am super new, but I'm new enough. I don't know everything in the hobby, but I have enough knowledge to kind of pick and choose what I like in this hobby. There are some brands that offer bare bones kits, so you don't have to worry too much or like even a set where you can just build it yourself and you can actually choose, pick and choose which parts. And this is where the 
First player unique keyboard comes in. This is a 10 keyless keyboard or rather 85% take TKL keyboard and it comes with a USB-C connection like most keyboards nowadays. What I like about this is that the USB-C is detachable. Most of the pre-builds don't have that option but I'm seeing a trend where this is shifting in a lot of mainstream boards. This is backlit. Also comes with 3-pin hot swap. Okay, here's another term that I'm sure a lot of you probably don't know. Hot swappable is basically when you can actually take off the keyboard switches and switch it out with any other switch. So long as the switch is 3-pin, you're perfectly fine. And it also comes with a plastic body. So it's basically a full-size keyboard, you just cut out the number board at the side here. So when you talk about keyboards, I'm sure most of you guys are very familiar with the full-size boards, but nowadays people are opting for something more compact, they're getting rid of buttons they don't need. Personally, for me, I'm a huge fan of 65% and 60% keyboards, but sometimes it's also nice to have an 80% board. For people like me, you know, we do, I don't really use the F keys over here, I get rid of that. I don't use this squiggly thing here, I got rid of that, you know and we bring everything else closer. I don't need this whole layout as well, so that's something more compact. But for most people, the only thing they don't need is a number pad, and I think that this would be the perfect thing for them. So this comes in two colors, there's black as well as white, but what options they give is a variety of colors in terms of keycaps. So right now, this is actually one of their brand new colored keycaps, but the OG is actually this one, the pink and white. Uh, don't look at the custom, don't look at the artisans, those are are actually uh, <laughs> my own stuff. We don't talk about that. <laughs> so for this keyboard, there's something else that you need to know about this. This is not your usual OEM style keycaps. So OEM is your usual standard layout. It's kind of like a little bit taller. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit low profile, cherry profile is like half the size, half the height of a OEM keycap, which means it's more shallow. But it pretty much does have the same curve, sort of like up to down to up again sort of like layout. So when you want to buy this keyboard, when you go to the website, you can basically already choose the options. You can either choose black or white. You can choose either a Gateron red, yellow, or blue. Yellows are my favorite. They're my favorite linear switches. That's a whole nother can itself. But basically, there's three types of switches. There are your clickies, like your Cherry MX Blues. There are your tactiles which are like these holy pandas here. And then there's your linears, which are like the Getron yellows here. Yeah, so linears are more on the talk side. So basically, if you want something with no bump and just like straight up like smooth, you go for linears. But if you want like a tiny bit of a nice bump and something more poppy, you go for tactiles like my holy pandas. If you want something like clacky, well, the Cherry MX Blues are your thing. Or, you know, may I offer you the Kylie Kale, Kale? I don't know how to pronounce that. Jade Box. And by the way guys, I know it looks super intimidating seeing the unassembled keyboard, but it's actually really easy to assemble. So easy. So long as you don't bend the switches while you're putting it in, you no problem. And even if you did bend it, all you need is just a plier and just to straighten it again, and it works just fine. Okay, so now let's talk about performance. So like most stock keyboards on the market, the keyboard does require modding for it to sound and feel its best. So personally for mine, which is this one, I actually commissioned it to be uh, lubed as well as filmed uh, because um, lubing and filming takes a lot of time. You can spend between three to six hours just lubing and filming depending on how efficient you are doing it. So the reason why you want it to be lubed is that usually stock lube will either be too much or too little and what lube does is basically get rid of the scratchy noises and make it less loud. As for filming, filming actually helps because when you open up a switch, there's gonna be a little bit of a gap between the switches. So you put a film there just to kind of like dampen the sound and kind of like cover up the little trivies in between. I don't know if I said it right, but you get the gist. Another reason why you need to mod this is because the stabilizers are usually very loud and very, very rattly. So there's always cases where there's not enough lubes in the sides of the stabilizers. And there's also another uh, thing where the stabilizers have a sort of like ping thing at the bottom, like a little tail that you need to clip off because it does ruin your PCB over time. And lastly, sometimes the metal bars, especially in the space bar and all that, are gonna be kind of like a little 
little wonky. Yeah, I think wonky is the right word. So you're gonna have to straighten that out. And once you do that, it's gonna give you a nice talky sound that's not Hear the difference there? Also, another mod in particular is the Band-Aid mod where you actually put a Band-Aid on the side there to kind of dampen the sound to make the keyboard less uh, hollow. You can even put some foam inside. But yeah, it's basically up to you how you want to mod your keyboard based on your preference on how loud, how quiet, how talky, how clicky you want it to be. And as I said before, I did get someone to help me mod mine, but there's no problem at all because it's easily learnable on YouTube and you can get all the stuff that you need to loop nowadays from a lot of places. Alright, let's talk about the overall performance. How it works when you're gaming on it. It just works like any other keyboard. What's different is that you're gonna have a better experience as well in terms of feel as well as feedback according to how your keyboard is built. So some of you guys, you get like a more squish, quick sort of like feeling. You can go for tactiles. For me, I prefer a slight bump, so I'm stuck with Holy Pandas. But I can even go for the uh, Boba U4Ts if that's my thing. Or if you like something that's a little bit more loud, as I said earlier, Chandlery, Cherry MX is your best friend. So that's the beauty of this keyboard because you can actually switch it out with any, uh, with any switch that you want. So, in terms of aesthetics, I feel like this keyboard is great. If you are the type of person who likes a sort of like neat sort of setup like me, like I have an all white thing going on over here, like I think this will be your best friend. Or if you're the type of person who gets bored of your same setup every single week and you want to have like different keycaps you want to play around with, this can be your best friend too. And I feel like because of the customizations they offer, it gives you a sort of different look to all those usual keyboards you see out there in the market. You can either have it super colorful, super dark, super light, super white, super black colored. It's entirely up to you. This does come with its own software, which is the unique software. You just install it and you can actually just customize the lighting any way you want. You can have all the RGB in the world. But uh, I'm glad I grew out of that phase, the unicorn puke phase. I mean, I talk about it a lot. I still think it's gorgeous. But the thing is, white backlight is life. It's the truth. And when you have white backlight, these custom keycaps just shine more cuter. Hi. It's the truth, guys. So let's talk about the verdict. The pros of the unique keyboard is that it's customizable according to your needs and aesthetics. It's a great price to start on, which is 265 for a whole set and can be cheaper if you choose not to pick certain parts. And it comes with a one-year warranty. The cons? I am not a big fan of the USB-C placement because I like my USB-C up here because I like using custom cords. But it's down here, you're kind of stuck using its own cord because custom cords does come with TechFlex. TechFlex is the outer part of the custom cord that makes it a little bit more fat so you can't fit it into here. The price is a little steep to other customizable beginner boards out there like uh, Royal Clutch. But I can't really complain since you get quite a lot with it. So, golden question of the day is, can you game on the first player unique keyboard? Yes, you absolutely freaking lootly can. Anyways guys, you can get this on Shopee, Lazada, as well as any authorized reseller here in Malaysia, as well as other parts of your country. Do check your local website for this. And yeah, I'm Tash. Please do talk to me about custom keyboards because I love them so much. I don't have an addiction. Maybe I have a little. I have a Corgi keyboard I haven't built. I have a Baka 60 I haven't built. I have a Bongo 60, Bongo Cat 60 on the way. Yes, there's a Bongo Cat keyboard out there on the market and I'm looking at buying.